Hey, bear. Check out this Malabar spinach. It's pretty beautiful. So I'm kind of walking the garden thinking about where I want to plant some stuff this week. And I'm seeing, I believe these are cucumbers. There were Armenian cucumbers there this spring. So these are coming up. That means we probably missed one and it dropped seeds here. That's a lot. I don't know if there will ever be an occasion for this. I don't think there will be, but it would be really interesting just to let my garden like go. And you would have to pull weeds, but to just let whatever sprouted that was reseeded grow, you would have a garden full of stuff. Like I pull up every spring, I pull up tons of tomatoes and peppers and eggplants, uh, flowers that volunteer, those cucumbers are coming up. Uh, there's just no telling what all would grow in my garden if given the opportunity because of reseeding. Like even here, let's look at this bed. Um, these are weeds right here. These can come out. This is some sort of flower, probably a zinnia. Um, here's some more little sprouts coming up. I'm not really sure what those are. This is bindweed, we do not want this. Um, that's a weed, those are weeds. That, I believe is, that's borage. I don't want this. It's not in the beds. This is something, some sort of flower, same here. I'm not sure what those are this young. That feels like cucumbers or melons, maybe. That's a flower. My guess is, I kind of have an advantage here because I know, like these are zinnias, all of those. Um, and I mean, those have receded here for quite a while. But yeah, that's just all these things growing in these beds from years of stuff dropping seeds. And this year I actually did let some of the volunteers grow, but I just think it would be funny to really see what all would grow entirely on its own in this garden. These are dahlias right here that I actually planted tubers for in the spring, but they were so overshadowed by the stuff that was growing here. But when we pulled it out, they started to take off. There's some basil that came up next to that. These guys were volunteers. That was that uh, catnip was just a tiny little plant start, but there's no telling what else might grow in this space. Uh, those are basil sprouts right there, actually. Coming up, I see over here in this bed. What's upright, Mr. Rooster? That little guy needs a name. He doesn't have a name. That's a bean, um, which is interesting because actually this was tomatillos so that must have fallen from here so that's probably a noodle bean i would guess um that's a flower that's a flower so i had zinnias right there for spring and summer so that's probably washed down from those oh yeah look at all those those are all zinnias and honestly a lot of these i will probably just leave for the fall and i'll put some other things in here but uh, those will actually probably flower before it gets too cold. Lots more zinnias over here. I'm surprised I don't see more beans here because um, several of those Thai soldier beans fell to the ground. That may be one. I spy a garden boy running to the garden. As soon as Ben realizes I'm not in the house, he says, oh, I'm going to the garden. <laughs> <laughs> you must be feeding everybody. Now obviously I wouldn't have quite as much reseeding if I was more diligent and made sure that I, I harvested absolutely everything. Um, not necessarily the flowers. I guess you could deadhead all the flowers and you wouldn't have as much reseeding. 
but with like the beans and stuff obviously that was because I left them on too long and I didn't get all of them when I was harvesting so some of the pods dried and fell but I don't know it's kind of cool I had several things in the spring that I let grow I just wonder what all would grow in these beds if I didn't do anything about it actually I went with my cousin Josh um, a month or so ago and he has a friend that does kind of like a gardening initiative in this area and he has several high tunnels well the guy had to move out of town for a little while and he sh was sharing his growing space with some of his friends but a couple of the high tunnels were just vacant and they just grown up and man we walked and looked and I mean there was so much food growing in that space amongst lots of weeds but for somebody who knew what they were looking for you could go in there and just like harvest tons of food and I think that's a really cool thing about gardening it you know leaves a lasting effect here's an interesting bit of a tangle here we've got some really pretty yellow zinnias these are the canary yellow ones I, and those are neat I sowed those late this is cinnamon basil it smells amazing there's some purple basil now that that volunteered some sunflowers which are about spent oh check this out I didn't think these Tabasco plants were going to do anything this year and, and looky there we've got some Tabasco peppers they might end up doing well after all oh what my mom put down here <laughs> how cute is that my mom's name is Mary Ellen she painted this rock and put it in here I love that thanks mom isn't that sweet little surprise in the garden from my mom whoa check out the fungus action going on in these beds it's wild. I don't know enough about mushrooms. Some more basil. This is cinnamon basil, which I just dry and use like regular basil. It's got a spicier flavor. Um, kind of a little bit of a burn making the aftertaste. It's definitely not your typical sweet basil, but it is really good. It's very fragrant to be sure. We're actually uh, starting this week on the irrigation in our garden, which is cool. That's gonna be a major game changer for us. All the stuff came in from Haas Tools the other day. And um, actually Ben Turn starts this week as Ben employee around here. And um, he actually has some experience in putting in irrigation. So. That is going to be one of his first jobs here. Check this out. Look at this Mexican sunflower that's growing in the compost. The really weird thing about this is that I've never grown Mexican sunflowers for these to have reseeded in here. I have no idea how the seed got in here. I really don't know at all. It's kind of interesting. It's beautiful, big. Got some other volunteering things down in there. Looks like some tomatoes and there was a squash, but it looks like the squash bugs even killed my compost squashes this year. Here I've got, um, of course they're closed now because it's not morning, they'll be open in the morning. But I've got some pretty purple morning gl glories. Those came up on their own. I've got a, a melon here and it's got a couple rotten spots, so I was gonna give it to the girlies. Ooh, exciting. Ah, my lemon balm and mint beds filling up fast. I guess I could go ahead and kind of pull some of these weeds out. I think this is going to really fill out quickly. I still have a ton of lemon balm and mint dried in the house, but that's okay. We'll take more. Hey ladies. <laughs> I love when they get to fussing like that. I really don't have the right shoes on to be sitting in the chicken yard. Bear will protect me, right Bear? This is a close in on my toes. Good boy. <laughs> so my flock is molting, as you can see here by Opal. She's looking pretty rough. She's usually um, incredibly voluptuous and now she is not so much. Hey little girl. Oh my gosh, I think we just became best friends. <laughs> so, we haven't been getting very many eggs lately, which is actually, she just picked me. Best friend status revoked, I'm going back to bear, little chicken. Um, we haven't been getting up. 
and look there's Randy outside the fence Randy has just decided to make his home out in the yard he would rather just, don't peck me stop why are you doing that you're just not being a very nice chicken <laughs> Bring chicken food! I'm in danger! <laughs> I have these little flowers on my shirt and she wants to peck them so badly. <laughs> there, you're failing, man. This little hand, we're friends again. So Opal is actually one of my original hens, the Lavender Orpington. Well, she's not one of my original hens, but she comes from my original flock. Uh, back whenever we used to have like a jillion chickens, we were wanting to get into breeding rare breeds. And I got this line of very, very um, well-bred Lavender Orpingtons. Breeding them, and I very uh, quickly learned that if you're going to do like a rare breed of something, you need to be willing to like really get invested in it. Um, and I just, it was not something that I wanted to pursue that seriously. So we ended up just integrating those Orpingtons into our regular flock. Are you leaving me? Are we done here? Well, don't stand there too long, don't poop on me. We ended up putting them back in our flock, but when we still had them isolated, a friend of mine called me and said, hey, I have a broody hen and I was wondering if you had any eggs and I was like actually yeah I've got some eggs for some really great chickens. <laughs> she came back to me uh, and she's gone again. Uh, so I gave these eggs to my friend. She put them underneath her broody hen and about two and a half years later she contacted me and said hey I'm super busy. Um, she'd gone back to school and she had a bunch of stuff going on. And she said, I have a handful of chickens left. Uh, would you like some? Would you like to take them back? And I was like, yeah, sure. So she brought them and one of them was that Lavender Orpington, which was like a couple generations down at that point because she had ended up with some roosters and uh, some hens and I guess they had crossed and we had ended up with this one. So I thought that was really interesting that even though all of my original chickens are gone, that that one ended up coming back to me. Look at all those feathers. That's just for molting. I'm getting hardly any eggs right now. Look at Randy out there. Oh, here comes the chicken food to save me from the pecking. Hey, bud. Look, there's Randy. Is he gonna decide to come back? Are oh, you shaking it to try to get him? Good idea. Okay, come on, man. Come feed the chickens. Woo! Hey, go ahead, take it. Would you like help? Come on, bear. Do you want to do it or do you want me to do it? Good job. Wow. I don't think Randy wants to come in, baby. Benjamin might actually get Randy back in the yard. Yeah. Here, look, he's right there. He's right there. Say, come home, Randy. Come, Randy. come on, life is better in this yard. Come on, Randy. Randy! She doesn't want to Randy, Ben, Randy is just a rambling man. I actually want to spend more time here with my chickens. <gasps> Now chase that hen away from it. Chase the hen away. Don't worry about Randy. He'll come in. Go. Yep, come on. <gasps> Is he coming? Yay! Randy! <laughs> Randy. Uh, where's Randy? He's in there with all the ladies. What is it? I want to name that one mozzarella. You want to name that one mozzarella? Yeah. Which one? And that one. We got him, name that one, Mozzarella, because I love him so much. 
If we because you love him so much. Okay, he we looks can... so good. <laughs> we can name the white one mozzarella. She doesn't have a name. Just dump the bowl out so they can all get to it. It's okay, just pick it up. How? Not enough space. Just grab it. <laughs> Get it. Pick it up. Grab the handle. <laughs> Let's dump it out so they can just all eat it. Look at them laying all down in there. There we go. That way they, more of them can get to that food. There we go. I think that's a better idea. So I actually want to talk to you guys about something that's been on my mind for the last couple of days. And when I came down here knowing I was going to shoot a video, just kind of making my rounds. That's usually when I shoot videos in the evenings. When I do, I walk around the farm and just take a look at everything and visit with my animals, make sure they're all doing okay. Uh, there was a time that I wanted chickens, like more than anything. I actually wanted chickens before I wanted any other aspect of a small farm, of a hobby farm, of a homestead, whatever you want to call it. The thing I wanted to talk to you guys about was like intentionally practicing gratitude. And I think that there's this richness that is available to us in life whenever we choose gratitude. It's a choice. It's not something it, I mean, it, it has to be cultivated, it has to be grown like anything else. You choose to plant, you choose to grow. Uh, sometimes it springs up, sometimes it volunteers, you know, but even still, it still has to be cultivated and supported in order to really bear fruit. And, you know, when I first got my chickens, I really had wanted them for so long. I had read so many chicken books, it's not even funny. And uh, it was the first thing we got when we got a farm. I wanted chickens so bad. And I used to bring this chair out and sit it in the middle of my chicken yard. And that's where I would pray. Like, every day, that was my prayer time, is I would go stick this chair right in the middle of my chicken yard. And I would sit among this fulfillment of uh, this, this very deep desire of my heart, which really was a deep desire of my heart. And some people like roll their eyes like, oh, it, did, that's the desire of your heart with chickens. It really, really was. And that's okay. Um, you don't need anybody else to validate that the desires of your heart are important. And whenever you're praying for those things, you're asking God for those things. Like he's not, he's not checking off by priority what is allowed to be the desire of your heart. And chickens, was mine um, and I used to sit and just like in awe even and wonder that this had happened for me and I've just thought about it this last few days as I'm really like focusing on the good and being like you know what I'm going to intentionally practice gratitude and I thank God for so many things and I've got these alpacas and this awesome goat herd and these things that were just I mean like way out there like huge things that were so important to me my garden which moves my heart every single day I sit at my window and look out on it and just I'm like wow but I, I think I kind of lost a little bit of the wonder for the chickens they just have become so commonplace to me and I was driving home the other day and I was remembering that before we had chickens, like before we had anything, we just had this house, I had a specific route that I would drive home. And it was longer, it took like five minutes longer to get to my house, but I called it the chicken way. And I would drive past all the houses from town to my house that had chickens out in the yard. That's how badly I wanted them. I just wanted to be by other people. I wanted to see other people's chickens. And I was thinking about that and I was like, I need to take a chair back to the chicken yard. Uh, sometimes we just have to make a choice to cultivate the gratitude and not allow uh, things to become commonplace whenever once there were fulfillments that we desired for and that doesn't mean to stop wanting and to stop dreaming for more and stop moving on to what may be next but um, I think that that we all probably miss out on a lot of joy in our lives and a lot of um, hope even because we forget the prayers that have already been answered and um, I don't know I just wanted to share that with y'all came down here during this beautiful golden light had a little moment with a little henny sitting on my lap. Um, and even though they pecked me and thought that I was food, it's filling my heart up to be here and we're just remembering how very much um, these little desires and these little prayers have been answered. I do hope that that encourages you. It may be silly to some of you, but I think for those of you who are watching these videos, 
this uh, this YouTube channel may be a little bit of your chicken way and if that's the case it is my joy to share it with you um, I don't think that it's silly at all thank you guys for hanging out with us today uh, and I bless you until next time